Novak Djokovic is actually the man behind the Batman mask, and Roger Federer is the stunt double of Ryan Reynolds. Okay, just kidding. Guys, here are some stories you may never have heard about some of your favorite tennis players. And don't worry, I'm not trying to prank you this time. These are all real. Starting this one off is our beloved Roger Federer. Roger Federer in 2015, King Roger came under intense backlash from his Pakistani fans as he faced many threats online from those he had hurt when he chose to support the Indian cricket team over the Pakistani team. Two arch-rivals in the game of cricket, which produces often one of the most heated sports rivalries in history, a rivalry that still goes beyond sport to touch on the cultural, political, and religious. What happened seemed simple and innocent, but his fans from Pakistan weren't taking any of it. The Swiss maestro had only posted a picture of himself holding a blue Indian jersey with the hashtag bleed blue, and Pakistan took offense. Those who have supported him with so much candor and passion felt betrayed and threatened to take down all the posters of Roger they had in their rooms and phones. In an Indian newspaper known as the Express Tribune, another diehard fan of Federer wrote an editorial titled, Dear Federer, Why Did You Choose to Bleed Blue? It wasn't Federer's fault, mind you, the man just loves India and has for long been an open admirer of their culture. But the Pakistanis didn't see it like that. One writer even went as far as calling him a sellout. That writer was Suleiman Ijaz, and he wrote, I did an informal poll of the dozen biggest Pakistani Roger fans I know. All very serious fans, mind you. Two of them were not bothered by the picture, but 10 out of the 12 felt seriously hurt or betrayed. Six of those 10 said you had acted like a sellout and have stopped supporting you altogether. Maybe these fans were all just overreacting. Besides, they were never hurt when Federer openly said he loved Indian food and would like to eat naan bread during his IPTL tour, or when he asked his Indian fans to take him on a tour through India by photoshopping him in different parts of their country. Nevertheless, their hurt is understood, because this was the Cricket World Cup, which commanded over 1 billion viewers between India and Pakistan, which completely trumps over the worldwide viewership of the Super Bowl that draws only 160 million, and to have had their favorite tennis player pick their arch-rivals over them would have really stunk. But as Pakistani fans of Roger Federer tended to their wounded hearts, Maria Sharapova, until her retirement, maintained her title over aircrafts all over the world. Serena Williams Could Serena Williams be a gangster, or at least does she support murders and drug dealings? Well, you tell me after you hear this. You see, at the 2012 Olympic Games, Serena faced Maria Sharapova in a lopsided game, wherein she came out victorious, clenching her first Golden Slam title. And to celebrate this, she burst into the Crip walk dance for a few seconds to loud cheers from the crowd, while her sister Venus beamed, yelled, and threw her hands in the air in rhythm. It was only a dance, right? Wrong! The dance sparked a lot of controversies at the time. The Crip Walk, or Sea Walk, is a hip-hop dance which we see the likes of Snoop Dogg dance often. Remember when he did it on stage with Dr. Dre on the halftime show of the Super Bowl? Yep, that dance. Turns out that the Sea Walk was first popularized by the 1970s Los Angeles gang known as the Crips, who were famous for their drug trades and brutal murders. So many concluded that Serena Williams was supporting crime by literally dancing with the devil. Jason Whitlock of Fox Sports wrote in response to the actions of the star that what Serena did was akin to cracking a tasteless X-rated joke inside a church. Serena deserves to be called out. What she did was immature and classless. The criticism didn't hit the brakes there, as another blogger named Devi Schlüssel wrote, Yep, that's what we need representing America. A gold medalist who, upon winning, glorifies hardened criminals who murder each other, and innocent Americans for sport. But Serena couldn't be bothered about all her critics, and her response said it all. I don't care, she said. That's the least of my worries. I'm so excited I was able to dance. I'm glad I did it. Maria Sharapova you're probably wondering, when did they ever make competitions between humans and aircraft that you never got to hear about, especially when it had your favorite tennis player involved? Well, you're not crazy or under the rock, there wasn't really any official competition like that. However, Maria Sharapova has been credited for having the loudest grunt in tennis history, and when they compared it to the sound an aircraft made, they discovered hers was louder. It was recorded that her on-court grunt was capable of producing a volume as high as 101 decibels. If you saw the Chinese movie Kung Fu Hustle, which had the landlady with the sonic scream, then maybe you'll be able to understand the extent of her shriek. But on a more practical note, Maria's scream on the court is louder than a lawnmower, than a motorcycle, and a small aircraft landing at almost the same volume as that of an ambulance siren. But that's not even all. When the king of the jungle a lion roars, many of us without any doubt will take cover. 
Well, a lion's roar is only five decibels louder than Maria's roar. So to put it in perfect perspective, when you come against Sharapova, you're almost coming up against a lion. Kudos to all those who faced her and were even able to beat her. We move away from the lion's den now, where you wouldn't really be blamed if you lost to Maria Sharapova because, well, you were overwhelmed by the noise, to one who blamed a hot chick instead for losing a game. Nick Kyrgios This video will not be complete without Australian tennis bad boy Nick Kyrgios. Nick lives and breeds controversies. He's a good player who's ranked as high as number 13 on the ATP World Ranking, but whose popularity has been bolstered by his frequent on- and off-court outbursts and misbehaviors. Guys, it's never a dull moment with Nick. Who can ever forget when he asked his fans to smear their faces with Nutella and Vegemite to show their support for him? Or when he asked for a beer during a game? It's no longer surprising to hear Nick on the news for shouting at the umpire or throwing a chair in frustration and anger, or just shading other tennis stars on shows. But this might just surprise you. It was September 21st, 2019, on a hot Saturday afternoon, when Nick faced Roger Federer in the Lever Cup. The Swiss legend had come from a set down to beat the Aussie youngster in a game that was considered tough and tight. After the game, Nick had complained to Captain John McEnroe that a hot chick in the stands had stolen his concentration, and that was why he lost. He had said, I lost concentration. I saw a really hot chick in the crowd. Like, I'm being jarringly honest, I'd marry her right now right now. Nevertheless, we never really heard any news of him marrying that girl or any other girl since, and I wouldn't have been surprised if they said something in the line of him being a stalker. Eh, just kidding. However, this next and last one for today is all for those stalkers and the stalked out there. Stay out of trouble, folks. Emma Raducanu We all know that celebrities get stalked all the time, and while this can get really creepy and dangerous, it never seems to be going away anytime soon. The British star and one-time US Open champ Emma Raducanu had gotten her own taste of the stalking pie in the most extreme way possible. She had been stalked by a 35-year-old man named Amrit Magar, who admitted to have walked 23 miles from his place in Harrow, northeast London, down to Emma's home, where he had stolen Emma's father's shoes because he thought they had belonged to the tennis star. When her father discovered that his trainers were missing, he quickly alerted the police and Amrit was caught. He pleaded guilty to the court and confessed that he got in touch with her address by going to Emma's family home and then asking people for directions. When he discovered Emma's personal home, he had visited with unsolicited gifts and cards, stolen items from the porch, and even went as far as leaving a lit Christmas tree on the front porch in December of last year. Emma, as you can imagine, is understandably devastated about the ordeal, and she's commented, Since all this has happened, I've felt creeped out. I feel very apprehensive if I go out, especially if I'm on my own. Because of this, I feel like my freedom has been taken away from me. It's just crazy, but thank God Emma is already looking to get herself a new home. She had said this herself, saying, I want to move to a new house with better security because I'm worried he might come back as he knows where my home is. 